Hi, it's Ed in San Diego, and today is 22 January. Year's off to a fast start for us. I hope it's good for you. We're awaiting arrival of our special guest, Stephen Howard, author of Humany, H-U-M-O-N-Y, it's a new book, winning awards, all about leadership, taking care of people, employees, caring, not a new concept. Stephen Howard's got his finger on the pulse, and we're going to hear all about his approach, and we're going to discuss feedback. How can it be better, more effectively applied? So I have to ask, are the managers, are the bosses listening to the feedback? I'm going to find out from Stephen Howard. Stay tuned. Okay, we're back, and here's Stephen Howard. He's in uh, Mexico City today, and I'm in San Diego, as I've mentioned. Uh, Stephen, welcome again. Thank you, Ed. Good to see you. Good to see you. So, you're you're off to a fast start, based on the humany reviews. It is off to a gangbuster start, quite frankly. Lots of lots of new opportunities, lots of things happening. Yeah, that's good. I find that too. So yeah. let's let's talk about um, the latest Gallup thing, which has to do with remote working and how bosses don't want to embrace that they're being forced into it and i've recently just sent you um you know today's bulletin um and let's talk about feedback and particularly from remote workers do do the bosses pay any attention to the feedback i don't know the well I don't know if the bosses pay attention to the feedback they're receiving, but I also think that the bosses are not doing a very good job of providing feedback to their employees. And I think it gets stretched. I think it gets worse in the remote situation, which is, I think people are uncomfortable having conversations remotely, uh, whether they'd rather have it face to face. So, um, yeah, so that, that's impacting without a doubt the uh, effectiveness of feedback. So why would people be uncomfortable having conversations remotely because they're being recorded, obviously recorded? And not necessarily, although the interesting that's been happening lately with people getting fired, the person being fired is recording and putting it in social media. But I think in terms of feedback, number one, I think most bosses are uncomfortable in providing feedback to begin with. It's uh, particularly if it's the so-called constructive feedback or enhancement feedback type nope. stuff. What, um, what, why are they uncomfortable? That's why they're a boss. Well, they, I don't think they've been trained in it, quite frankly. Uh, and, okay. and, and quite honestly, the majority of feedback in the workplace is ineffective because they haven't been trained in it. So they get into their managerial hat role where they tell people what they need to do. And there's a better process for what I call sharing feedback rather than providing feedback. Uh, so people are uncomfortable, but particularly new new managers, first time leaders, first time supervisors, because they have not been trained in how to do it effectively. So what's the difference between shared and given? That's a great question, Ed. Um, given it, you know, if you think about, I'm going to give somebody feedback. Your mental mindset is that it's going to be a one way conversation. I'm going to tell this person where they need to improve, what they need to do. Uh, sharing <laughs> feedback is more getting into a dialogue. You enter the conversation with the mindset that I'm going to have a conversation with you, Ed, I'm, I'm, and I want to hear your ideas. Uh, I want to share some feedback with you, but it's a dialogue, and and that's a huge difference, just your mentality of how you approach the conversation. So it's less threatening. It's less threatening, but also it's more productive. It's more effective because uh, one of the keys to effective feedback is getting the other person's involvement uh, to get their ideas. Uh, so, for instance, if, if you were to give me feedback on what kind of a guest I am, um, you, you you might tell me certain things like fix the lighting or fix your sound. That's giving feedback. But if you want to share feedback, you might talk to talk to about, Stephen, what do you think? How could you improve? Or I, I've had some listener feedback that says you talk too fast. Um, what do you think you could do differently to engage our audience or to slow down? And then you get my ideas rather than you telling me, 
Stephen, you talk too fast. You need to slow down. That's giving feedback. Well, I don't think you talk so fast. But... <laughs> That's a top of my <laughs> mind example, Ed. <laughs> okay, so once again, why is so much feedback apparently ineffective? I think there's two reasons for that, Ed. Um, one is they don't you don't get the person involved. And if you don't get them involved, you're not going to get them to buy into the changes that you want to see made as a manager or as a leader. Uh, the second one is, and it's probably the one that, again, because no one's been, very few people, I should say, have been trained in this, is understanding the impact. So if the person doesn't understand the impact of what they're doing or the potential impact of making a change, they're not really motivated to change. Uh, they might change because the boss says to do it. They want the job. They're, you know, they want to keep their job. They'll do it, but they'll do it reluctantly. They're not bought into it. Whereas if you involve the person in the conversation, you get their ideas on what could be done differently. And you as a leader say, hey, I like that idea. Yeah, let's try that. The person's going to be bought in because it was their idea, even though you as the boss probably already have that idea because of your experience. But rather than tell the person what to do, get it, get them to say it, and then they'll buy into it. And that'll make it more effective. So let me ask you about role playing. Do you coach managers, uh, leaders on uh, acting out? Uh, it's it's actually theater with without being so um, you know provocative mm -hmm. you know theater is a provocative uh, concept and name for a lot of people who are very uncomfortable yeah i don't call it so much role plays practicing I, when i coach people mm -hmm. particularly when they have a situation they said look i need some help i've got a, i've got an employee that i really need to work with and um, get them to change a certain behavior or certain process they're doing, or maybe even an attitude, is I'll have them, we'll practice it. And for two reasons, or actually maybe three reasons. <clears throat> One is to practice what they want to say. Two is to practice the body language. Uh, and that, you know, the smiling, the nodding of the head when the other person's talking, being fully focused on the other person in the conversation. And the third one, and this is the one that catches people by surprise, is to figure out what you don't want to say in a conversation. For instance, you won't, and people do this, people go into a feedback conversation, so let's say something like, Ed, this is not really important, but, and the other person, you're probably- Well, boy, that's the hammer coming right yeah, down. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know the hammer's coming down, but also if it's not really important, why are we having a conversation about it? But those are the kinds of things that people will say, um, or they'll, you know, they try and sugarcoat it by saying, Ed, you're a really great employee, you're a good team member, we really appreciate having you around. But <laughs> so all that, all that so-called positive make you feel good is gonna go right down the drain as soon as I finish the rest of the sentence. So um, am I gonna get fired? <laughs> now nah, I'll keep you around. <laughs> Okay, so the managers need training. Uh, so are, are you pitching that to your, yeah, I mean, that's that's what it's all about. And it's that, a key part about it. And, and guess what? You're not going to be surprised, but I have a book coming out in February on effective feedback. It's a, a small book. It's a tip and techniques book. It's going to be about 80 or 85 pages. And um, it'll be it, you know, walk people through a feedback model, the best tips to do, practice to do, get prepared to give effective feedback and share effective feedback rather than just give ineffective feedback. Well, that's that's really uh, smart of you to do that. Keep them coming. <clears throat> yeah, well, I can't train everybody. I mean, I can only coach so many people. So this will be like the, the feedback Bible for those I can't coach. So let, let's talk about this for a second um, to be uh, to um, define clearly effectiveness. Uh, and uh, now we're talking about a mid manager, not executive VP or even VP. Typically, I mean, but but it actually applies to anybody who leads people. It could be a first time supervisor or it could be a VP. It could be, uh, you know, I've, particularly in certain functions where 
some of the leaders are more introverted um, and are not used to leading people. And then they have the concept that they're going to manage people, which means they're going to tell them what to do. And as we've talked about in the past, that managing people concept is what has led to the great resignation and the quiet quitting trends. So let's talk about what's going on in the marketplace right now, uh, meaning the um, marketplace for employees. Um, the uh, obvious demographic shift mm -hmm. to younger people who are extremely tech oriented and uh, less personality driven they're tech driven uh, where they they grew up with a phone in their hand even though it was a play toy it was a phone and they got really comfortable moving their fingers fast and I still have trouble doing that and I used to play piano but even now I mean I can't move more than two fingers at a time so <laughs> um, there's a disconnect automatic between generations within the world and mistrust. So what, and this could be the next book, but uh, what would you uh, do to teach building trust so that effective feedback can occur? Well, they do go hand in hand, Ed. Um, by sharing feedback and helping another person improve, uh, you're going to build trust with that individual. And, and part of what that phrase I just used is part of the mindset. I mean, the purpose of feedback is to help somebody improve their performance, their results, their behavior, their actions. Uh, and if you go into it with that intention to help them improve, then you're going to build trust. The other thing that you have to understand is, is that um, we can't change people. I, I can't change you. You can't change me. We can try and inspire or motivate people to change. We can coerce. We can threaten them. But at the end of the day, the other person has to make that decision to change. And that's why I referred earlier to making sure they understand the impact, the impact of what they're doing. And, and that could be the impact on the department results, could be impact on their own performance, could be the impact on their relationship with other team members if they're slowing the team down. It could be the impact on their relationship with you as the boss, as their manager. All Whatever it is, is having an impact. If they understand the impact, and then they're going to be more motivated to make a change. But if they don't understand the impact, if they just think, oh, my, my boss wants me to do it this way, or I don't, I don't understand this. Here we go again. i got to make another change. I'll just do it because they want me to. There's no buy-in. So let's just say that you're my boss and and I'm uh, good at what I'm doing and I, I want to uh, get promoted and and I view you as it would be wrong to view you as a stumbling block. It would be more correct and more proactive for me to make a friend mm -hmm. and yet our personalities are in the role playing the personalities are vastly different yeah. um, how does how does success happen in a situation like that it may not be you need to think of me as a friend but you would hopefully think of me if I was your boss as a trusted mentor a trusted advisor um, but then I, I, as your boss, I have to trust you. I have to also demonstrate trust is a two-way street. It's just not you, the employee, trusting the boss, but the, the boss has to show that, you know, that I would trust you. I would, you know, for instance, if the, in this situation, if I was your boss, I, I trust you. If I didn't trust you, I would review your questions for every guest. Ed, please send me your questions for the guest tomorrow, you know, by today, and then I would review them. Well, that doesn't show trust. That shows micromanaging. Uh, but let's say that you ask the guest a question that as your boss, I thought, hey, that wasn't really appropriate. Then I would talk and say, hey, Ed, you know, that question you asked so-and-so, um, how did you feel when you asked that? And how did, how did you think the guest reacted to it? And 
you know, did you think that was an appropriate question? Maybe you just said it came off the top of your head at the time. Well, what can we do in the future to kind of prevent that? And what do you think, Ed? This is how I'm getting you involved. And now you're going to come up with your suggestion of, you know, having written questions or, or only following written questions. Okay, that sounds good to me. Ed, why don't you try that? So now I've given you, I've mentored you on how to, how to improve and maybe how to minimize asking inappropriate questions type thing. Again, top of my head example. Not that yeah. you do, but... <laughs> no, that, that's cool. So once again, let me get back to you about uh, something I previously asked you about video, uh, doing a remote like we're doing now. I'm a thousand miles away from you. And, but here we are on uh, six inches <laughs> and, and, and it's being recorded. <laughs> so uh, this will be a historical document. <laughs> and uh, you know, once, once again, we're role playing. So why wouldn't this be better than an in-person? First of all, it's recorded and it's known that it's being recorded and uh, you as a manager would have um, alerted me as a good good manager. <laughs> you would have alerted me to what you're going to be asking, all right, or at least general outline of that, and for what purpose, and and I'm going to and I'm going to like that having that comfort zone, so I I can media prep if you will. Mm -hmm. All right. So this is like theatrics to some extent, Hollywood to some extent, but it's just called prep. And it, because it's on camera, it's a double edged sword. It can work against you if you blow it. And if you master it, it becomes a record, irrefutable record of communications ability, mm -hmm. problem solving, discussing. It would and would benefit the leader. I'll be honest with you. I encourage the people I coach not to record feedback conversations uh -huh. because it could make the other person feel like that. it's almost like if, if you're doing it face to face and you invite somebody in from HR to sit into the feedback conversation and take notes, that's going to make the other person uncomfortable. And, and you don't want the feedback conversation to be uncomfortable. Yes, it would. It, it might be good for me if I could show my boss how good I am at providing feedback and sharing feedback. And my, as you said, communication skills and problem solving skills, it might be for my benefit, but I don't think it'd be for the employee's benefit. And I think it'd make them uncomfortable uh, in doing so. So I would not record it. I think, um, you know, I don't I really have a problem with doing it through video, but like, that's me. But I, I think a lot of managers might have. Uh, this video is much better than a phone conversation because a phone conversation, other than your voice, I can't really pick up on your nonverbal. I can't see where you're going, oh, here he goes again, or, you know, I might hear the sigh, or I can see where, you know, if the other person's, you know, looking away, looking at the phone or, or looking at another screen or something, I can see they're disengaged where I can't see that on a phone conversation. So face-to-face -face is best without a doubt. It enhances communications. There's no doubt about it. But video, there's nothing necessarily negative about having a conversation through a video call such as this. I would not do it. And also there's two types of feedback here. I mean, there, and I, I coach people who change their language from positive and negative feedback. Because if there's positive feedback, then there's negative feedback. But if I go back to what I said earlier, if the purpose of feedback is to help somebody improve their performance, their results, their relationships, um, their uh, behavior, their attitude, there's nothing negative about that. So I tell people, think about we have what I call reinforcement feedback, which is to talk about the things that they're doing well, and we want them to repeat or replicate. Or enhancement feedback is where we want to help them improve in a very specific area and hopefully over a very specific time. So um, the, those kind of, but the first one, the reinforcing feedback, I think you can give reinforcing feedback by email if you want, you can give it on a phone call, you can leave a voice message. If you wanna send somebody a, a Teams message, those are adequate. I still think it's best to do it face-to-face -face or video call. 
but you can certainly give reinfor reinforcement feedback, tell them what a good job they're doing through other means, but enhancement feedback, corrective feedback, whatever you want to call it, certainly should be first face-to-face, -face, in person if possible, if not, through a video call like this. And it's not just the back to work people. A lot of people manage and lead people remotely. I mean, I have people I work with that I lead. I've got people in Singapore, people in Australia, and you know, we just can't meet all the time for feedback. So we do it on a video call. Yeah, I see there's nothing wrong with it. Okay, so thank you very much for your time here on this uh, very interesting topic. And yet I, just want to review one thing we've already talked about. I just want to uh, emphasize, <laughs> want to <laughs> underline as we get off the show. Um, effective feedback when remote. Now, you and I are remote from each mm -hmm. other, okay? And you were just talking about that in a, in a, in a video call mm -hmm. situation. So... Can it be effective for a company to rule, order that everybody partakes in media training? Because media means exactly what we're doing right now. A, a, a video call is media. So you should be careful not to pick your nose or scratch your head or whatever. And you know, comb my hair, look good, you know? Uh, so wouldn't that make it easier or more fun, especially for younger people? I think it would. I think uh, whether you want to call it media training or communications training, uh, uh, yeah, I saw one organization that is now doing um, um, cultural training for everybody. So just how to interact mm. in meetings, how to, how to be polite, how not to interrupt people things of that nature. But definitely, I mean, communications is one of the most important skills for leaders. And again, my definition of a leader is anybody who leads people. So that's a first, that's a frontline supervisor. It's a team leader. For them, communication training is extremely important. And, and part of that communication training should obviously be communicating virtually, uh, but also communicating, writing, communicating by email. I mean, I, I, I got an email today from somebody and the way they said it to me, I thought we had a partnership going. But obviously the way she wrote the email um, and she used the word us to, to indicate her company that I contract to, I, I walked away thinking this is us versus them. She, she doesn't see this as a partnership. She sees this as her company that she, or not that she owns it, but the company she works for and me as a contract laborer. And boy, did that just put a, a gap in our relationship this morning. So how you communicate has a huge impact on and everything, but particularly how you communicate when you share feedback has a huge impact on whether you're actually going to develop the people you want to develop and whether or not they're going to stay around or find greener pastures elsewhere. Uh, can I get a couple more minutes of your time here? Certainly. Okay. I want to talk about something sensitive that could be the right thing to do at this moment in time. And that is by bringing people together who might not ordinarily ever want to be together because of uh, the opposite of DEI, <laughs> whatever you want to call it, okay? And the fear factor or insecurity factor or... I'm up ready to meet this person who ordinarily I would never want to be face to face with because of whatever the reasons, right? Just historical, political, psychosocial BS, you know, that goes on. And particularly in larger organizations whereby, okay, the manager, my manager, is somebody of a different culture, a different background, um, has never indicated a friendship towards people like me uh, for whatever the reason or scope. That 
would be frightening for a lot of people. It is. It is. And, and forcing them into that situation is frightening. Um, you know, trying to re-engineer people's thoughts or feelings um, through whether it's through a corporation or government rules and regulations through quotas or whatever it is. I mean, all I, I think all we can do is, is preach the benefits of that, the benefits of being open to other, to other cult, even cultures. I mean, culture plays a factor in that as well. And look, I, I've lived 33, 35 years of my life outside the United States. I lived 21 years in Asia. I felt that as a as a white person in certain situations in Asia. I was not accepted. Um, so this is not a a US, you know gender, racial thing. This is a global, so this is a humanity thing, uh, Ed. I mean, I lived in Australia for 12 years. There were times I felt accepted in Australia, and there were times I did not feel. I felt like an outsider, even though we speak the same language, supposedly. Um, so anyway, it's, it's a humanity issue that you're bringing up, but I think some people are trying to fix it by forcing it either through corporations or government rules and regulations or whatever. And, you know, like everything else, there's pluses and minuses to it, quite honestly. Um, so, yeah, we're, it's a social experiment we're going through. Um, I, I, I'll be honest, and this might offend some of your viewers, I don't believe in quotas personally. That's me personally speaking. I mean, the quotas of, of having X number of um, say women on a board of directors or X number of right. African Americans. No, I, I, I think if you put people in because of quotas, it's going to backfire. But that's my own personal experience, my own personal judgment. I understand why you know certain states and 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 uh, national governments, like even in Australia, is trying to legislate that that you must have a minimum number of my you know people from the um, less than majority. <laughs> Um, social economic status or social status on, on your boards. Uh, well, it's forcing it. Maybe it will work, but it's a social experiment. I personally think it'd be good if you had the attitude of, hey, we need diversity on our board. Let's go find the best people available. And hopefully uh, we find that uh, we can find talent within a racial diversity, a, a gender diversity, a sexual orientation diversity, whatever it is. But don't force it on people because I think... Uh, I don't think that people who get in those positions necessarily are respected for their talents like they should be, but they're demeaned because oh they're here because they are fill in the blank. You know, they're 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 here because of the quota system. Stephen Howard, thank you very much for being again on Global TV talk show, a smart guy and easy to listen to and participate with. So thank you. Okay. Please please come back. Have a great week. Enjoy talking with you. Thank you. Bye-bye.